For many who gathered at the Women's March in D.C.'s Freedom Plaza, the battle for abortion access is personal. In 1974, I was 19 years old and pregnant, not married, no job. I didn't know what to do. Susan Sherman says she ultimately decided to keep her child, but the right to make up her own mind was vital. The Supreme Court's 1973 ruling in Roe v. Wade guaranteed constitutional protection, with some limits, for a woman to access abortion services. I had a choice at that point in time, and my granddaughters today, who are 15 and 12, don't have that same choice. This is not the first women's march in D.C., but it is the first since this summer the Supreme Court struck down the constitutional right to abortion. I was pretty horrified. The court's 2022 decision in Dobbs v. Jackson overturned Roe, leaving individual states largely free to set their own abortion laws. A lot of fear for women who are going to be criminalized for um, for choices that they make to take care of their family, personal choices that should be between them and their doctor. Not everyone reacted to Dobbs the same way. Earlier this week, a different group rallied in D.C. in support of the ruling. This is the beginning of our fight. This is the beginning time for us to rise up as a country and make abortion illegal and unthinkable state by state. But for those at Sunday's Women's March, like Lisa Kaplowitz, their fight is to push states to protect abortion access. It's not right to foist parenthood on somebody when they don't have the resources to handle it. In Freedom Plaza, Zach Merchant, WUSA 9.